Hello and welcome back to Vintage Machine Made Marbles. I'm here with special guest Ron Shepard. We're going to discuss Jackson Marbles, Playwright Marbles, and we'll start with some Jackson, 1945, 1946, right. maybe, a, maybe a solid year of, of production. Probably a little bit less, somewhere in that neighborhood. This is when all the companies were getting into it all at once. You see Davis and Playwright came in the same time, and uh, this is shortly after Karen Aubrey got into it, and Jackson decided he would get into it. Uh, Jackson's a little better known now. I got started in the marbles, there wasn't none at all. And books in the Greenberg Guide said there was only one set of known examples that was in Clarksburg, West Virginia. So that made me chase them hard. So it took me about a year to even find one example of them, but they're finally popping out here the last several years. Jackson's are pretty unique. Some of them are really unique, and some of them, some of them are easy to identify, and some of them aren't. Some of them are just like a lot of the other companies. They use that vitro like call it, that is a if you can see it in this case right here, it is an off-white color. Some people call it dark, dirty white, cream white, ivory mm. white. It's not snow white, and it glows very bright, uh, really hot under black light. The red and white marbles, you can see it's not really snow white, and that will glow. You see that color, that yeah. will glow. So if you get a red and white marble, it's off color white, you got about two choices, three choices at the most. Jackson, Carol and Albany, or Davis. Those three companies all close together. And what they did, this is the only company, they have shared a truckload of that column. Yeah. That's the where same, that came from. Same, same ship, shipment of color right. coming in. And the red and blue ones, look red and blue, but if you look, you'll see the white also in it. So that white will that glow will in those. Glow. That will we glow in those. Give it a quick glow on, on this. That's the vitro like glowing. Here you can see it in red and white because they're bigger, yeah. a little bit bigger marbles. Yeah, you'll see that in care. And the blue and white ones, they're not real white. You see it's an off ivory, dirty white, mm. here, here, but you'll see it glow in those also. Right. You got a good light, it'll, it'll glow really bright. Well, that's my bad on the UV lighting. My batteries were drained, so we'll pivot to another Jackson display with fresh batteries and check out some of the rugged patterns on some of these examples. This is a David Tamulevich display. You know, they have they have the the blue and white where the white is the dominant base glass and then they have Oh yeah. They have or the blue is the dominant base glass right. and they so all glow. And they all I think they're all vitrolite. So this one, you know, through so solid vitrolite. Yeah. A little bit of white. You know, and then that's the, the glowing right. off white vitrolite. Oh and then here's the red, white, blue still grow glow. Oh, and there's those tomatoey reds. Oh, nice. Root beer types. They're the really bold swirl, swirls on there. Yeah, you know, they're yeah. thick. Right. Thick right. and white. Nice looking marbles. Oh, here's some of the browns. The green and white, the blue and white, the yellow and white, the Brown and whites do not glow, and they're super hard if you can separate them all from the other companies like Allen, Caro, and Heaton, and the rest of them. So the ones that glow from Jackson are real easy. This group right up oh, here, right. it's about the fanciest marble in those colors that Jackson used, and they're nicknamed Jack and Furnace Marbles because the majority of them we found had the small needling fractures oh. like the Furnace Marbles do. So, so these, that's an off-white, a red, and a purple. It's oh, this lavender. is a standard white. It doesn't glow. Okay. If you put them, you see the difference in the whites. Oh, okay. And a red and a sort of a purple. Those yeah. are nice. No, no one else has done anything close to that. This one right these, here, nobody's okay. done anything close to these. If you can get a look at those. Yeah. Those are Jackson. No other company has done that. Transparent blue with orange and white. And... These three right here are unique to Jackson. They've got, if you get to. Huh. It's a transparent, deep purple. Oh, those are nice. And oh, you got the, a little orange. You got the orange, is, orange and white with a, a deep yeah. transparent purple. Uh, they go oh, around nice. in the case. Orangey red and white. Those are Jackson's. Those are unique to Jackson. There's nobody else come come close to those other than Jackson. So 50% of the Jacksons, once you learn them, are unique to that company and, and the others are difficult. 
Jacksons, everybody calls them black and white. They're really a deep purple and white. The key on the Jacksons is they will not have any flame tips. They don't have much hook or anything else. And you can see how bright the white is. It's like a snow white. Mm -hmm. It's really white and really dark. Jackson purple and white. And it just swirls. You don't see any flame tips. You don't yeah. see any hooks. Thick, uh, thick swirls. Right. It's know. wide and it's really yeah. white white. I'm just, you know, so they just went through with the water line. Yeah. And, and when they did... Uh, the first time I heard people finding, I think they were putting a gas line through and it was going through here. And I heard there were workers coming home with lunch boxes full of Jackson Marlins. Wow. And this is about where I found my Jackson Marbles. Mm. You know, um, this is the sweet spot. Can you see it? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. That's great. There's like a, a little, little Jackson. Nice. It's a Jackson Mar <laughs> My first Doug Jackson. Cool. Oh, man. It looks nice. very nice one. I don't know if that's a black or we'll have to t check it out. Maybe it some yellow swirls, orange swirls. Mm -hmm. And what color combination is this? Did you look at those? Are they a little different? Oh yes. they're they're different too. Oh purple and blue. I'll pull them closer. Okay. Get them separated. Now we get a good shot at them. Oh. Oh, it's a, a lavender. And right. Blue. Yeah. It's oh, a, like a caro has some, something. And similar. Davis does too. They're, they're, they're a little bit different. The same stuff. They're close. The lavender is the same color, but the pattern is a little pattern bit different. Little, oh, right. And the Davis has a thicker uh, right. swirl. Right. It's wider. Oh, You've got cool. less blue. <laughs> right. <laughs> when you get them side by side. But. All right. So. And these look, uh, I mean, nine sixteenths, uh, generally speaking, on a lot Most of theirs is five eighths. Okay. And you will find, yeah, you'll find a few get close to nine sixteenths, but they didn't have a machine that was just undersized. That's a. Did they make unique to Jackson? That's a unique to Jackson. Huh. It's just a foggy red in there. Right. Don't have much color. Uh, and there's a few three quarter inch Jacksons, and a few three quarter inch. Carinolis. The Jackson didn't have a machine, you're just oversized. Most of them, if you don't have a three quarter inch, if you were digging this and that, would be out around this snap, but these are particularly good around it. They had one machine, five H machine, and that was it. I see. So. Also unique to Jackson are these beautiful baby blue and dark brown swirled marbles and a transparent wispy base. And that wispy base has that glowing vitrolite material in it. And combined with that swirl color combination, it makes them 100% identifiable as Jackson. That light blue glass shows up again in this next model, and it's paired with a bold opaque chestnut color that's not regularly seen in vintage marbles. The swirl patterns here are typically very dazzling and the base glass glows hot. It's a very exciting marble to view in hand, and it's one of Jackson's finest and most collectible marbles. Box of Jackson marbles. And well, we did some extra thorough digging and searching for anything unusual that showed up in numbers besides the random oddballs from large Jackson collections. We inspected marbles from the Dale Simmons, Mike Johnson, and David Tamilevich Doug collections, which was approximately 2,000 marbles total. And these are all Doug all Yeah. My God. We first noticed two peculiar pieces from Dale's collection, and then three that matched them from Mike, and then finally four more similar marbles from David's stash. These marbles show that same bold, opaque chestnut color that I just previously described, maybe somewhere a little closer to a brick red, and the base is a deep, dark, transparent blue, which can be viewed when backlit hard. Guys, this is a brand new and previously undescribed model of Jackson. And by the numbers, they're no doubt gonna be very hard to find. This is a very thrilling discovery and I want one bad. <laughs> That's about every variety of Jackson fan. <laughs> so. We've picked them out of a lineup, folks, and here they are. Seven of Jackson's most distinctive models that are exclusive to the Jackson Marble Company only. And for those who like to chase down rare West Virginia swirls, this checklist of Jackson's is hotter than a pepper sprout.
And on the topic of rare marble companies, Ron has provided his personal rankings of the hardest to find machine made marbles by manufacturer. Not everyone's list is gonna be the same according to where you live and what your resources are, but this list gives you a good general idea on the subject. What marble companies are the toughest for you to find? Please leave your list in the comment section below. This is a Jackson bag. Uh, I think I probably sold the first one as a canal man in Harrisville. His mother bought him at the factory and he broke a window out with the first bag he opened in the slingshot. So the rest of them went in the attic and they've been there all his lifetime. So uh, the first one of these I put on the eBay, I got him brought $450. How long ago was that? Oh, that's been 20 years ago. 18, right. 20 years ago. And then a friend of mine found a auction in Winchester, Virginia, that had a case of them that was 48 in. So that's where about all the nice bags have survived where they came from. Playwright Company bought, when Jackson went out of business, Playwright was still in business, so they bought the Jackson bags and the Jackson headers and packaged their marbles. This is Playwright. What information I have from it, I was good, good friends with the last owner there, Mary Jane Wilson. She said she had packaged marbles, but it was a long time before she'd show them to me. She'd get marbles out of her bedroom, bring them to me, put them in, her hand, in my hand. And I'd already had the Jacksons, and I kept matching Jacksons. And she'd go to the dining room, and she'd get a bowl of marbles out, and she said, these are playwrights. And I'd look at them, take them home, put it right beside the Jacksons, and they matched. Every marble she put in her hand, every marble she put in her hand, long as she was alive for years, 10, 15 years, matched Jacksons. And she said, this is the one she packaged her sons are older than me. She packages these when her sons is in the playpen at the factory. She said, these are our marbles, but they all match Jackson. I offered to buy a bag off her, and she said, what? And I said, $100, and she about fell off the table, fell, fell off the chair, and you know, she couldn't believe it. This next she said, Ruby's was doing lucky to get 20 to 30 cents a bag. Wow. She couldn't believe it. She said, well, you think I could sell them? I said, well, sure you can sell them. So the next year to two years, she was going to a few shows selling them, and then a few people noticed that they looked like Jackson Marbles. So the question came up was, that Jackson Marbles, or was she, you know, was she right? Yeah. So yeah. she got upset about it. So she went to a notary. Wow. And she made up an affidavit. She was so serious that she was right. And had this notarized, this affidavit that these are playwright marbles. Yeah. But she probably didn't see these made. They were probably bought when the bags and heads were made and she didn't even know anything about it. So far as she knew, these were their marbles. You see the short bags, this one in the red mesh, and this with the yellow mesh. You can see the difference in the length. These short yeah. bags, we've never found them known from Jackson. All these short bags came from Mary Jane Wilson. She had probably 50 or 60 of them. They've been spread around this, but these short mm -hmm. bags, that's the only place I know they ever came from. And the only person that we have any hopes of ever knowing what a playwright marble actually looks like is Sammy Hogue. When they put a water line through the Ellenborough, uh, he worked for Mid-Atlantic Glass. He put a water line through there, and he seen the marbles coming up, and that's where Playwright originally set the factory, which is long gone. So he was smart enough to go out and pick them up. And I've asked him for years if there was a difference. He said some of them was different. He said some of them was the exact same as Jackson. And several years ago, 15, 18 years ago, I can't remember, but the man that Sammy Hogue is, he was good enough that he couldn't keep the marbles because they weren't his, so he gave them to his boss who owned the property. And so far, I've never, nobody's ever got a look at them yet. So, who knows where everyone actually know what a true playwright looks like. We're looking at another tray of marbles that Sammy had saved. These aren't the ones that he had given back to his former boss, but he had acquired them locally in Ellensboro. He's saying that they match right up to the playwright lot that he had dug years ago. We didn't study them very closely, but they all seem to have the right look for Jackson too. Except for maybe these blue on whites. So the Playwright Marbles identifications topic, uh -huh. for now, remains unanswered. If, they, if, they're not playwright, if you enjoyed this video, don't be shy. Yeah. Knuckle down and give us a like. And say hello in the comment section. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you, Ron, David, and everyone else who helped to make this production possible. Happy collecting, guys. I hope to see you in the next installment of Vintage Machine Made Marbles.